It's using T in the variable, it's just the reverse of the point. It's, it's used to be, but that doesn't matter because now we want to work on the complex plane and this complex plane is uh, defined as the Z plane, the Z variable. So we have C here instead of T here, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and the formula is one. Okay, now we got the C plane, and this with the origin, this is mu z, imaginary z. The contour is uh, going, start from zero, going along the path with mu z axis, turn around, and then asymptotic will go to the negative UC axis above the, above it because there's a branch cut here. Okay, so that's a, this is one. Okay, now we want to know the asymptotic expansion. So we are we want to calculate uh, an expression with t large, the magnitude of t large t. And in fact, we are we will, this method will give you basically the leading order. There are a bunch of I, other higher orders. So that's the next method you do. That you will get the other one here. Well, uh, just let me continue on this. All right, so, uh, but uh, we won't go to the, yeah, we'll just talk about this method here. The stiffest descent method. All right, and uh, we, we did that for the gamma function. And in that case, you remember that uh, we put other factor in the integram as an exponential of a log and put it into the combining it with the exponential function, uh, which is, which of office you can do that. But uh, in this, at least in the textbook this way, uh, just consider this exponential function because this argument multiplied by t, which is large, and the other factor here is uh, a power function of z. It doesn't depend on t. You can say that uh, for large t, the contribution is determined by the saddle point of this function only. And you evaluate the whole thing with fixing z at the saddle point and not w worrying about the variation of, the, of this function over when you integrate over the saddle point. So that's treat as a constant. You basically you you pull that out as when you evaluate your set of point. Okay, so uh, that is less less accurate than putting it in the exponential function, but that's fine, especially in the extremely large T limit. So if you just consider leading all the uh, asymptotic series, that should be fine. Okay, and now the to get the set of point. Basically, is uh, what we mean is uh, find a place that uh, you are going through a path. When along the path, the set point, this function, this exponential function is the maximum, and then this uh, the width is very narrow, so it's it's basically a contribution of the whole path integral is given by just integrating a little across the set point. Okay, and to find the maximum, so you, and I think the convention is called this W in your textbook. Okay, so W is T over T. Right. And then the, to, to get to maximum, of course, you take the derivative. So this is derivative with respect to the CZ. So it's dw dz. Minus, uh, minus one over z squared minus z squared. And set that to zero. 
if this means that the shadow point is given by z square equals to a minus one or z equals to plus or minus one. Okay. So this this end up have, having two shadow points of one is uh, at I Z. You want to cross the shadow point, this is this is I. Then there's uh, another one is minus I. Obviously you won't go through minus I because you want to go to the uh, above the grand cut. If you go go this way, then you not go to the above the branch cut. And if you define the H mu two, that that half is actually going down and going it's going to below the branch cut, and that integral will go to this set of bonds. But we are considered this one, and we'll get H mu two by just taking the complex conjugate. So that doesn't matter. Okay, so we we'll, we'll choose just the cross sign. Okay. So, uh, so that's fine. And uh, the idea is to do expansion of W above the set of point. So W, which is a function of C, where the set of point is, say, C, or you call it C sub C, or let's just call it C sub C, or so C sub C or is I. Okay, and we evaluate w c of zero plus d w d z. We evaluate c to c sub zero and d minus c zero. And this obviously, when you choose it, c zero, we, we set it to zero, so this is c. Okay, and then plus one half of d squared w d squared. That's just a Taylor expansion. Evaluate at c equals c sub zero, and, and you ignore other other higher order in the Taylor expansion. So keep up to only up to second order. Okay. And what we want to do is uh, evaluate that. So we have dwdc here. Now we do the second derivative. D square wdc square. Yes. So the first term is doesn't depend on t, so only the second term becomes a minus two, cancel of the two in the denominator is minus t over c q. Okay, but you want to evaluate t over c sub zero q, and c sub zero is i. And so that's i q, which is minus i, and so, okay, i q is minus i times i, it's minus is minus i in here, <coughs> minus minus is uh, minus minus is plus, oh, well, i in the denominator, so minus i, minus i. Okay, so like I said, you see why I wanted you to check that. And this is important, the, the phase is important because that determines the angle you, you want to pass to set a point. So that's, uh, that's what we want to do. And in fact, uh, because of that, uh, we want to get the, the phase. We usually assume T to be real and positive. So the phase is determined by the minus one, so it's P E to the uh, minus I, and you can use minus I for T. That would be the minus I. Yeah. That's, that's what I got to call it. So, and now the, the textbook uh, in the chapter Twelve, you have the formula for the set of point method. It's typically said that once you get the phase of the second derivative, you can plug in that formula to determine the angle, the phase of the final integral. Uh, that uh, obviously you can use that if you remember or you look look it up. Uh, 
but if you don't remember, you, you cannot look it up. Then uh, the way to figure it out is, is just look at what, what is actually going on. So what we want is uh, put this into here. So uh, we want to pass the, the saddle point along the, the axis that going, going through the maximum. So the saddle point say, uh, this is not quite good. Uh, I think the saddle point is something like, I mean, it, we will determine how the saddle point looks. But say if the saddle point has uh, the function, this function, this fun exponential function going large at like, like this two quadrant and going small along this two two quadrant. So basically you plot this like so so along along this direction is going up. So there's like a curve that going up and both so this is the saddle point. And along this direction is going to be right so that uh, this you can use some imagination it's like a saddle saddle so so this is you want to pass the saddle point along the like going up a hill and go to maximum and going down a hill. Instead of going around the other way, if you go the other way around, you do this uh, two other hills along these two sides. You want to you don't want to go past this, so you don't want to go past it because this is large here. And or going past here, this is large here. You only want to go through this this path. Going going through the saddle point this way, right? So this so this is your saddle point. And you, basically, you want to change the change your variable. Say this variable z minus c sub zero. We call it whatever we want to call it. Uh, like call it z. Call it z. Okay. And you want to pass it such that. This direction is like the real. You see, direction is, it looks like oh, not not just real because the actor is real z multiplied by this this w double prime. So this the w double prime uh, along the along this direction is like or oh, I should say this this one. Uh, I should say this is W, real can see, but then you want to make it a, a, after you put this back to this function, both going back to here, along this two direction, the exponential function is a Gaussian that is, uh, that is uh, going, that is, has a maximum here, then going to small value along this two direction. Okay, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, E easier when you plug that back to here. So plug this back to here. Just consider the integral. So this is exponential function. So the first term is just W evaluate Z0, C sub zero, which is uh which is T over T. And this is i, c sub zero is i, minus one over i, which means uh, plus i. So you have two i here, so you have i times t. I times t. So that's the first term. Right. And the second term is zero. The third term is u. This is right here. This uh, this one, this one is here. You have a, uh, I still have the one half. Two, three, one half, and then e to the minus i pi over two. Okay, and this one to see square. And we write this the c square as uh, the c magnitude e to the i to theta 
And then we want to change that uh, so that uh, along this path, so that uh, let's see is just change it to uh, the polar polar coordinate. So that's this, that's a fade in here. Okay, and so this this so this this is your fade. So this is if you if you pass it this way, this is your conceived direction. And so that would be your phase. Okay. We want it to change to here. And so that is this integram. And you, you ignore this first. We'll, we'll, we'll take that uh, into account later. And that is uh, this is just a factor e to the i t in front and. This one you want to make it a Gaussian that is uh, large uh, at, at the center, but then going down at both, both ends of the C. So that becomes a, let's just put everything t over two. Let's see square. And that, is, that has a phase E to the I E theta. Minus pi over two. Okay. And the idea is that uh, to make this, to make it, make this as negative one, right? To choose a theta such that this is this exponential function is minus one. Okay. And so that uh, this becomes a Gaussian that fall off at both sides of the C, because that's minus T over two and C squared. Okay. Um, to make it minus one, obviously you can have a, if it's two theta minus pi over two is pi, that will make, that will do it. So two theta minus pi over two equals to pi. Or theta equals, we we'll put it back to here. You have uh, three pi over two. And that's two. Uh, three pi over four. Uh, right. Three pi over four. So that is your angle, two pi over four, two pi over three pi over four. So that that the angle is essentially this is three pi over four. Uh, uh, let me see if I got it correct. <laughs> Did I think the textbook at three pi over four? Yeah, yeah, three pi over four. Yeah, at that three pi over four. So. Oh, I didn't, I, I got it correctly. So this is g pi over four. If you plug in a formula, you will get that also, but the formula will give you two options. One is this option, the other is going the other, the other direction. So we're going to get you two values. So, but you need to choose one that uh, is the direction of the, your path. Because uh, if you choose the other direction, you'll get a negative sign, obviously, because you just integrate in the other direction, you get an opposite sign. Uh, but then you cannot pass it from here to there, because uh, in order to pass from the left to right, you need to first go to the left first. But that's, that's the only way you go to the left. Right? That's the only side of the pond that you can go to the left without going up the hill here and there. You don't want to cause the hill. You only go to the path. So the ones you need to go past it and then go past it. That that doesn't make sense. So the only way the path is is going this direction. So that fixed the path, the angle is fade is pi three pi over four. It's just, so this will be the the one that make it a minus one. Okay. And now that is an integram. And the phase will come from this DC. 
Okay. And what we'll do is uh, change this to a D to C integral. So D C becomes a D C minus uh, a Z zero, which is R. Right. This is a C. So this is D to C. Right. That as uh, is D to C. But we want to go to integrate along this path where the C is the real part of this C. All right, so we want to go see this one. So, uh, and then uh, put it in here. And then this theta is, is this theta, C pi over K. Okay. And uh, then the, this integral would become uh, a, like a gas integral. So let's just write that explicitly. This H one. Maybe. Now we need to be a, a little careful. Keep all the facts here, uh, right? Um, we have this e to the i t here, and then divided by this vector pi i. Okay, and then you have this. You have this in the here, and then you have this extra factor, but uh, we, we said that we evaluate that as the saddle point. So we take that out of the integral. So this is C sub zero, which is I. So you have I yes. to the power of mu. Yes. Okay, right. So that is uh, coming from here. And the rest is exponential function of uh, minus, because that's changed the minus one, minus t over two. And when we do that, we say that it's, it's the magnitude, but then when we're going to, through the path, actually this is the real case. Yeah, because we only consider that we, this is changed to the, the C magnitude to determine when it get to uh, negative, so we can see that it's going through this way or going through that way. So this is just half of the consideration going this way. But when, that, when you go through the path, basically you can change that to a, the, this change to a real to see uh, variable, real to see square. Right. And that uh, same thing here, that's changed to a C here. C, but then you have this uh, theta, which is going right here, so I theta, which is C pi over K. And that integral, because T is large, and so you only need to integrate a little bit across the saddle form, and that will give you the whole contribution. So effectively, this is minus. And that will give you the saddle point. Um, that will give you the Gaussian, right? So that will give you, uh, I think it's square root of pi times two over t in the square root, right? So now <laughs> all these are just the phase that you need to be a little careful. That, yeah. All this will give you, a, supposedly, will give you a phase. And this will give you the e to the t. And then uh, you have e to the i t. Let's get to get all the real coefficient first. So you have a square root. Of, yeah. from, the, from the Gaussian integral, that 2 pi over t. But then you divide it by pi here, so basically change the pi to the denominator. And then we have the, so that take care of this one, the e to the i, t, 
Yes. This this feels exactly two times it, it has come into its favor here. And now the all this I uh, it depends on how you want to write it. I if you want if you write I as uh, you put the I I for two then uh, you have I I to the new so you have a minus I new pi over two so that's coming from new pi I to the power new you have I to the power uh, uh, one and times one which is minus one minus one is uh, e to the i pi or minus i pi but then uh, this is in the denominator so uh, you can say this well plus i pi or minus i pi so, say uh, so it's the same it's plus or minus i pi let's just use i pi if it doesn't get to the textbook value you can change well, that should take care of all the facts, all the phase factors. So, uh, and let's see if we've got it correctly. So you have 2 over pi t, e to the i t, you have minus i mu pi over 2, that, that's all correct. Now, the you can combine this, uh, you have pi, three pi over four, plus i, pi. So if you use, use my way is seven, seven pi over four, which, uh, which is, uh, minus pi over four, because you, in my way, you call it this angle, seven pi over four. So in your textbook, it's written as minus pi over four. That, that that's the same the same angle okay? you know you know what I'm saying this complex thing that you, you can either call it this way or that or you can say it's just minus two pi you get my value to textbook value so uh, you write it as the textbook value this is uh, two over pi two u to the minus uh, plus i t always looking at the, the other t my, combine all this i out so you have mu pi over two and this become minus pi over four so that is actually one uh, okay so uh this this will give you a leading order meanings of this exponential function that's the most important factor so this exponential function and the second one is this square of t. And supposedly there will be other terms that we ignore, so the other inverse power of t that we all ignore other terms. So that's just the leading order. Okay. Well, what do you start? Okay. So, is it okay up to you? Yeah. So we spend a lot of time. The most time we spend is to determine all the span. The phase angle. We'll get the right phase angle, which is not very important, but for some application, we get the phase correct. Obviously, you need to get the phase correct. Yeah. Otherwise, you you get different sign. And the, yeah. It depends on application. Sometimes it's just this, this and that. Sometimes you need to get the phase group. Okay. <laughs> and, but uh, to get the phase correct is basically this consideration. If you don't use the or you don't have the formula for you to, to calculate. Okay. Yeah. Uh and this step is this good thing again. Can you get all that? All of them? It's it's all good.
the basically all the saddle point method is like that. Uh, uh, some variation is whether you include that in the exponential function. If you include that in the exponential function, obviously W will be more complicated and the determination of the saddle point will be slightly more complicated. Uh, but you can do that in principle. But uh, once you know how to do it from once, you apply it to other saddle point integers. Like it's actually a very common. Yeah. Actually, as a matter of fact, I used that uh, in my master thesis and my PhD research also, both, both need the uh, integral measure. So I learned this <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so, all right, it's okay up to here. And the rest is uh, just going through the all the procedures. So, H nu two is the complex conjugate of H nu one if the argument is real. So this is uh, if, like this is P. It's just uh, H nu one complex conjugate for real T. Okay. So the idea is that uh, everything is real. If T is real, just change the sign to minus. So that uh, that's fourteen point one twenty six. Okay, so that uh, once you have HQ1, HQ2, and we already talked about that uh, in another course, that by uh, 14.76 and 77, so HQ1 and 2 are given by J nu plus or minus I Y sub so here. Therefore, also, you can solve for J sub so nu, this one half of HQ1. Plus okay. Uh, in that case, uh, H nu one is this H nu two is this with the negative sign. It's just like the the, the factor is in front is the same, so it's e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta, which give you two cosines. You cancel it with this one half. So basically, this the same thing with cosine of this argument. So if you write want to write this way, cosine. Okay. And why new why sub new is I just say this this is asymptotic. This is asymptotic expan expansion, not not the thing. It's actually everything is asymptotic. Okay, and Y sub mu is uh, y sub mu is by this is one half of h nu one over two i actually h nu one minus h nu two so, and in the same way so this is a sign g as a sign. Okay, so that uh, that's good for it, and then uh, you can also uh, calculate the uh, asymptotic expansion for i i sub u and k sub u by using the uh, just going through the definition. I sub u is straightforward uh, because it's defined as the uh, complex argument. Here's that. Equation. Uh, the equation is in. <laughs> yeah, in a equation fourteen point ninety nine. Rise of the Using the equation in the equation ninety nine fourteen ninety nine. Is I to the mu and J so mu uh, I times X. Okay. Uh, so basically change that to I I X for change the compact uh, imagine argument 
And in doing so, this cosine is just e to the i of this plus e to the minus i of that right to right and uh, we will evaluate at i x for a large r for large x then uh, because you have both term e to the i of i times i is minus one but then you have an e to the minus i uh, of this angle that will give you a, so you have both the exponentially large and exponentially small when you plug that in but when x is large, magnitude x is large, you keep only the only the positive term, which is e to the x term, right? Because other the other term is small compared with this term. So it means the i will be exponentially large. And the rest is to figure out all the phase rules because uh, that t changes the i times x. So there's a phase here. So i is you take the square root also. It has a phase, and there's a phase coming from all this, and you can figure that, figure that out as before. Um, the final expression is um, this. Um, well, in a fourteen point one forty three, it will turns out that uh, it's, it keeps only the real. You get rid of all the complex things. There's no complex phase. And the reason you have this, this is two over pi. This is, the two is here because this is cosine, right? Cosine is one half e to the i of this one plus e to the minus i of this argument, right? So you have one half here, but you keep only one term. That's one term exponentially large. So you get the two, two over two in the denominator, and one half in the denominator, and cancel this one. So you get square root of two pi in the denominator. And k is uh, uh, k is slightly more complicated, but uh, if you use the result that uh, the textbook derived, then uh, then you can do that also. That would be, e that would be easier. The thing that we saw this in there. Fourteen point one oh six. And we use fourteen point one oh six. Okay, so you. Two, I, new, one, one, one. Okay, we use this one, but uh, then uh, K actually is uh, related to X sub one only. So X sub one is this, this one, okay. And you evaluate i times x. x is real and positive real. So i times i is minus. Term. So you get the minus, only one term is minus x in here. So that exponentially is more. Um, if you work out all the phase, then you can check, double check that uh, the phase all becomes a uh, And so it, 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 you get only the real part, only the real expression, which is. Which is obviously uh, correct because uh, all these i and k's are defined as real function for real argument. Okay. So, so this is coming from here, right? Uh, so. And the reason this is different because you, you define as a pi over two, there's an extra pi over two in the in front. So basically multiply pi over two in the square root and flip this, flip this sign. So you have pi over two in here, right? So this is also different from here, this square root of two pi. So this, this as in taught expansion, doesn't have the same factor in front. So it just need to be a little clever. And 
that the idea is that k is exponentially small, i is exponentially large, right? And all these are better function, oxidative function, j is cosine, y is sine, and h new one and two is e to the i t or e to the minus t. And all have this square root of the argument in the denominator. And the rest are the phase or the factor. The factor, all these special function have basically the same factor in front two square of two over pi. But different, the phase obviously, uh, uh, so, I mean, one is sine and cosine obviously the phase, the phase angle, uh, Values are the same, you know, but for I and K, the basic average of all the phase, you don't have phase. Yeah. And for the leading order. Okay, so that's all the asymptotic expansion, all the basic things. Okay, okay.